Okay guys, so um, we have a severe problem. The thermostat is not, the car is never getting hot. And the other thing is my temperature gauge is constantly reading cold or 50 and it never actually moves across. So I think it's bad. So time to uh, investigate and fix the TT yet again. So I've been driving for half an hour and I'm just home now. My coolant temperature gauge is still reading cold, but the reservoir that holds all the coolant is full. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Also, I got a check engine light, P1296. I have the temperature sensor in a mug of hot water and the screwdriver is just holding it up so, just so the plug isn't submerged as well. And um, yeah, it's not going too well. So I don't know really what's wrong. Obviously, I think the temperature sensor has failed because even in hot water or boiling water, near boiling water, it's probably down to 80 degrees now, uh, it's not moving. But also, these are the radiator pipes. And which one's which? Okay. Right, this one here is the bottom radiator. These are just, I think they're for air conditioning. But these ones here, this one here, and this one over here. So that one's hot. Well, obviously like now it's cold, but like that one was hot, like you couldn't hold your hand on it. And this one is the bottom radiator, and yet you could like just literally hold your hand on it, no problem. It's basically just engine heat from the radiator and just underneath the bonnet heat had warmed that up. So, not really, really sure. I'm kind of suspecting both of them have failed. So both the, the thermostat has failed itself and locked itself closed, and that's why this here one is cold. And this one over here, probably, because this is closed, the heat is going the other way around or something like that. And this one here, this year, it's just the temperature just got too hot or it's old age. And um, it's burned out now as well, or it's just not working. Hmm. I'm not sure what to do. You guys got any ideas? Okay, so the temperature is dropping. So it was at 50. It's now gone down to 46. And the gauge up here, it's also at 50. So like that's basically 56 as well, or 46. Okay, so let's take out the temperature sensor. There it is. That's the temperature sensor. So the little clip on the bottom, and then we're going to undo the, the actual plug. So get the little clip out. And then Okay, so inside this there's four pins. So two pins obviously to go to one part of the sensor and then the other two pins go to the other part of the sensor. So it means there's two sensors inside, or thermocouples I think they're actually called, inside the one sensor. And so one of the thermocouples go to the ECU, which is mounted somewhere in there. And the other two pins go to the dash clock. So what we can do is use the Wi-Fi dongle and graph the temperature that the HVAC is showing versus the temperature that the app is, is showing us and that's reading off the ECU. So we're going to do that next. And what I'm going to do is get a cup of boiling water and put this into it. Okay, so I have this little Wi-Fi dongle. Um, very simple, it's just an OBD2, it's on Wi-Fi. So I'm just gonna plug this now into the car and then connect it to my phone. So it goes in just there's a little plug off in there. All oh, the lights are li lighting up. And oh yeah, don't forget to turn on your ignition, otherwise uh, the computer won't be on. Okay, now I'm going to connect my phone wirelessly to this. These are the three apps that I use. You can watch the temperature gauge, but because we use boiling water, that should be starting off at maybe 80 or 90, and it's only at 63. It does come up, but I still think it's wrong. Because there is a difference between the HVAC saying 56 and the app saying 64, that means that the temperature sensor is damaged. So we've got a new sensor and we'll take it out. Okay. okay, so sometimes they come with black tops and sometimes they come with green tops. And as far as I know, the black tops were recalled and you get the new ones are now green, so that's why they made them a different color. Now that we know that the old sensor has burnt out, we have a new sensor here, so we're going to install it next. And it fits way off down there, into that hole. Okay, 
And that's now the sensor back in. And now to get the plug on. Okay, that's the sensor and the plug now back on. Okay, so next step is to uh, drain the radio system. So I'm underneath the car. Um, there's a very handy little just knob just up there where my fingers are. If you pull that straight back, I think you have a little, little uh, twist that's right. Little drain just there, and uh, I have a bucket now that's just uh, draining into. So very handy. Um, that's how much is in it at the moment. Okay, so there at the thermostat, and unfortunately it's not in a straight line as you can see. So the top one is actually quite easy to get off. The top nut, I mean, so it's a 10 mil. And the bottom mil, bottom nut, there's a, a hex that actually goes inside it. So what I did was- A long Allen key with like a swivelly head on the top of it. Went down here and in between where the this wire here goes in, like in so I get in to the side. There's actually no room, so it's very hard to get the light, my hand and the camera all the focus at the same time. But um, yeah, in like that, in between the two of them, and you'll actually reach, you can just about see where the, the tool is going anyway, you'll about, just about reach it down there like that. So if I line it up there, it'd be better, it's miles out, but um, yeah, you can, yeah, pain in the arse to get to it, but you might just like, so I cracked it with just a little tiny socket like this. So. Just one crack and it's open, and then just wind it out with this one, and um, yeah, it comes out easy enough. So, where's it gone? That's better. Okay, so that's the part I took off. Um, yeah, just be careful not to break it or put a crack into it. And there are the nuts. So you can see that there is a hex inside it, and then a 10 mil on the outside. Right now. Time to pull the thermostat and put the new one in. Okay, that's the O-ring. Now to get the thermostat out. Okay, that's the old thermostat. This is the new thermostat. If you want to get part numbers or whatever. Okay, let's get it open. New thermostat. The right one is has a little nipple on top, which it does. And this opens at 88, I think, or 87 degrees. And of course, they gave you a new O-ring. Perfect. Let's uh, drain the system and get ready to install this. Okay, so it's always a good idea to get your new uh, thermostat and just dump it into a boiling water, just to check that it works. And um, I've done it before, I did it with this saucepan, just put hot water into it. And this one opens nearly straight away. And this one does not. It takes a long time for it to open, so it must be Either this one's just getting old and any bit of temperature will make it open and maybe that's why I'm seeing like 70 degrees on my thermostat or on the temperature gauge and like it was never really hit 100 or um, 90 I should say so this one here we're going to just put into the boiling water I have a bit of rope onto it just to so I don't have to pull it back out again and yep that is open as she has it just cools now it'll probably close so maybe this one was opening too easily or this one you know it needs a good bit of heat to actually open and it's actually correct so we'll, we'll see it just closing there now okay so you have both of these obviously this goes in first so when you look at it you should see this and it should be pointing north to south basically it makes absolutely no difference i think if you have it the other way around but i'm going to put it back in the exact same way i saw it when i took it out so i don't think there's any point of even recording it because that's where it has to go and by the time i get my arm in you're not going to see much else so that's the hole that the term set fits into okay and now i have it all back together again so when you're putting in the thermostat terms that goes in first then the o-ring but to get the o-ring in the actual is, is impossible to show you but um the actual uh, plastic tube that's there you put the o-ring onto it i had to use a, a two drops of super glue just on either side of it just to stop it from falling off 
Um, so when it's, it's compressed down, it, it doesn't really matter. The super glue will fail anyway, and then that the O-ring will be in the right place. And to get the nuts on, both nuts go in together, put a little bit of grease at the bottom of the nut, on the, on the bottom nut, and that just holds it onto the actual thermostat housing when you're putting it in so it doesn't pull out. And um, that's basically it. So guys, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you later.